agenda, um, sort of a last minute add to the front of the agenda, which is for Taylor Street. Um, it's just uh, the property owner at Fort Taylor Street just is um, curious about how you feel about a shed project that she wants to do with life. What is this going to be a little presentation? Not really. I have I have one graphic to show, but it's just a question for you guys. Oh, okay. So should we start with that? Yeah, I feel like we should start with that after some island updates, maybe. We still need another. Oh, we got it. Carol. Yep. Yeah. There's Carol. Okay. Um, what's the name of that? Um, the the, for, the Fort people. Taylor Street. I added to the agenda. It's on the agenda that well, I'll, I'll put up. Put up. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's on that one. Oh, okay. Hi, Carol. Hello. Hello, Carol. Hello. So, I don't know where Gretchen is, but we're going to start at 4.45, at 4.45, at 6.45. In some other time zone. <laughs> yes, in, in, in the uh, central time zone, we'll be starting at 4.45. Julia, have you been involved at all with what's happening in Salisbury or you just kind of watch and listen? We were just talking about that. I haven't been involved oh, just... at all, but I was just speaking with their conservation agent yesterday about it getting sort of the inside scoop. It, apparently, it's not as bad that, as what the media made it out to be over there, but they did lose a lot. Of, they lost about half of the sand that they put down. Um, so it was not a, a good situation for sure. But I think that it, the media sort of implied that it was like all gone and it wasn't. Mm. Makes a good headline. Yeah. Mm. What happened? What happened out of, are we going to talk about this later? I'm sorry, I don't mean to. All right. What happened out in Reservation Terrace? Anything out there or is it still status quo? Oh, they 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 fared pretty well. Um, yeah, relatively speaking, I guess. Mm. Okay. All right, let's uh, let's get this going. Bring this meeting to order. This is the uh, March nineteenth, twenty twenty four, Newburyport Conservation Commission meeting, taking place on the Zoom platform. This uh, meeting is being recorded. The first item on the agenda are the January sixteenth, twenty twenty four, meeting minutes. Does anybody have uh, any changes or? Yeah, additions. Sorry, I just I have. Sorry. Uh, I just have something at the very end. I I, I don't have it in front of me. Uh, if you can just go to the last part, it it I believe it had me voting on an item, and I wasn't there. Is this for January sixteenth or February sixth? Ah. And I put January sixteenth. Oh. Sorry, the meeting minute. So it, the agenda is is reading oh. that incorrectly. It should actually oh, sorry. be February sixth. That was that's my bad. Okay. That I left it that way on the agenda. All right. Um, February sixth. Sorry. And February sixth. Where did you want to go? Uh, the very end. I thought that somewhere when I read this the first time. Um. Oh darn. Yeah, the adjournment has you voting yes. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. what it was. That's what it was. Got it. That was a test. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody but David failed it. No <laughs> oh, well. All right. Anything else? Motion to I approve. Okay. I get a second. Second. All right. Uh, roll call. Seymour. Yes. David Vine. I'm gonna abstain because uh, I wasn't there. Okay. Uh, Carol Wagon. Yes. Dan Warshaw. Dan's mute. Yes. Okay, and uh, I vote yes. All right, next, uh, we have uh, 
Any Plum Island updates? Not really. Um, I I think it's pretty status quo out there as we were just discussing. Um, nothing really new to report. We haven't heard from the Army Corps on their major maintenance report study yet. And um, it's just no real no news from the island right now. Okay. Can I ask a uh -huh. question that they, I sent those photos when the uh, road, uh, at least by Joppa was totally flooded. They were turning cars away. Was it flooded out to Plum Island too? Does anybody know? Was the causeway flooded? Was I this... think I saw that it was closed briefly. Yeah. yeah. Was closed for like half weekend. hour. Yeah, or the weekend before. Yeah. Not okay. for very long, but the same day that they had all the um, erosion on Spen Salisbury Beach, it was closed, I think, for part of that day. On. Okay, just wonder. I mean, it was. I've never seen that road at that part of Joppa closed from flooding. So. <clears throat> Yeah, there was a lot, a lot of water coming down from up north. Mm -hmm. um, all right, uh, so we have uh, a small presentation regarding uh, Fort Taylor Street in the shed. Yes, Judith Pickett is the homeowner. Judith, I've um, allowed you to unmute, unmute yourself if you'd like to, and I have your... Um, your, this is the sketch. I'll just give a brief um, introduction. So um, this is for Taylor Street. It's a double lot, but it's considered one lot right here um, out to Barker. And this is a single existing single family home. And you can see right here, right adjacent to this side property line is a shed, an existing shed. And and you can also see that it's right up against the property line and sort of like on the property line. And so in an effort to, and it's an old shed, a, a very old shed. So in an effort to kind of like move it into a more appropriate location, given her proximity to her neighbors and on the, and with the property line, she wanted to move it to another location on the lot um, or just, you know, replace it, replace it with a new shed somewhere else over here. Unfortunately, and these are the set, these are the zoning setbacks that you can see. It's 20 foot zoning setbacks from those from the road. Um, unfortunately, this entire this part of the site is all um, located in the V zone. And, and a good portion of this um, vacant lot is also within the V zone. And so in order to replace the shed, she'd have to elevate it two feet above base flood elevation in the V zone. And that sort of makes it impractical. So the question is, because she is moving it and an existing shed from you know, a location somewhere else on the site, and it is not as advantageous to put it in, there's a portion of this, this site back here that's in the AO zone. And in the AO zone, I apologize, I don't have the, the flood zone mapping on here, but in the AO zone, which sort of wraps around the corner like this, um, you only have to be two feet above the highest ground elevation because base flood isn't determined. But in the V zone where base flood is determined, you have to be two feet above base flood, which which makes it impractical. But um, Ms. Pickett doesn't want to move the shed to the AO zone over here because this is such a beautifully vegetated vacant lot um, with wildlife and it's just un an undisturbed area and she'd prefer to just leave it natural and undisturbed and keep the shed on the more developed part of the lot. So the question to the commission is, would you be amenable to that sort of um, waving of the regs in this case <clears throat> to move the shed within the V zone rather than somewhere else? Well, is that our reg or DEP's? It's ours. Okay. Can I say something? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I do have um, the elevation or the the part of my property on in the V zone and part in the AO zone, and Julia nicely printed that out for me, so I, I do have it right here. There is there's a large part of the vacant lot that is in the AO zone. And then there's a small portion of the the more popular, or you know, the, the other lot where my house actually is. Um, 
but of course that's right next to that empty lot part. So I don't know where I want to put it, it. It it looks like a small part of that is in the AO zone, and then the rest of it would be in oh, the velocity. Really? And, yeah. And where? So is can that sort of can over here? So yeah, that's where you're pointing is that it looks like on this is the AO zone and it goes almost from that red line, maybe a little, yeah, like the red 20 foot mark, almost okay. at a triangular to the corner. Okay. Of my... So you would have it partially within AO and partially within B in this location? If I put it where I... I would like to put it, um, yeah, closer to being, I guess right now what I'm looking at is the AO zone. Mm -hmm. And then what's next to that, you know, where that black car is, yeah. right next to that is a right of way. Well, I, it's sand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's about 10 feet between their property line and mine. And then if I could I would like to just put it six feet inside of my property line, six feet away from the people behind me. Um, and that would be, yeah, part of it would end up being in the AO zone and part of it would be in the V zone. So, um, and would it be in this area that's sort of like- That's my driveway. In your driveway? If you keep going no other way. <laughs> down here yeah and, and, and it also allows my neighbors it's not going to block anyone's house it's not going to block anyone's view okay we're all okay with it why, why don't we uh, um, commissioners do you feel comfortable with i mean i think judith at this point we would it'd be good to see a plan showing where you'd like to put it yeah, I'd like to see where she wants to put it and where the AO and the V zones are in relation. Yeah. To okay. Yeah, me too. So I could draw it maybe on this AO and V zone portion that Julia gave me, this map here. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm just going to ask the commissioners, would you be comfortable with her because she's removing it from another part of the lot with her doing this as an RDA? If she can keep it in as much of the AO zone as possible? Hmm. Or do you want to see it first and then we'll take it and then we'll decide? Yeah, I'd like to see it first. Okay. Yeah, I, I think so too. Yeah, that that and, would be my preference. And you're more than, I invite you to come and look at that empty space. It's, I, I just would hate to put a shed in it. Oh, I'm perfectly happy with you keeping that empty space, believe me. <laughs> yeah, I love it. It's, it's, I don't know. I, there are animals out there. I, I just love it. Because <laughs> if you put it there, then you'd have to be trekking back and forth to get to it. You know? I thought about that. I went out and I measured the 20, <clears throat> feet or 20 feet and then, you know, approximately where it would have to be. And, and you're right. I thought of that when I, I measured it. Now, the six you... feet that you mentioned, that that is because of the uh, building permit? I that's what I was told it had to be six feet from um a yeah. neighbor's property but uh Jen actually said yeah was it yesterday I was in there Julie I think um yeah. <laughs> I feel like I've been in there so much Jen Jen said that you know they would probably defer to you all um mm -hmm. as far as like a setback I mean my neighbor behind me she goes put it on the property line she goes Judy put it wherever you want <laughs> You know, she doesn't want it in that empty lot either. None of them do. Yeah. And why why can't it stay where it is now? I mean, be so built where it is now? Um, so it's partially that those property lines aren't accurate. Um, it actually is partly on my neighbor's property. <laughs> the, the property line goes right through that shed. Hmm. We both have surveys. I actually, my neighbor sent me her survey. I didn't look up on mine because you know hers basically is going to say the same thing mine does. Yeah, it goes right through the the property line, or the property line goes right through the shed. 
Does it go through your house too? No, it does not. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'm sure there are some situations where those do. Yes, yes, they do. <laughs> no, the deck does not go through. Just the shed is on their property. Not all of it, but. Yeah, I, yeah. If we can see something uh, um, with the with the flood zones listed, it, it looks to me I have uh, the uh, new report me map up right now, okay. and it, there looks there looks to be enough room um, in that corner right above the the twenty foot thing. Um, there seems to be plenty of room in the AO zone there at least because it. The AO zone looks like it goes about uh, the the distance between the the property line and that red line. It's about mm -hmm. the same amount um, to the left, and then the the triangle goes down to basically the the corner um, below the the sixty one or six foot or whatever that is six feet. So yeah, it seems like there's enough room in there, but. Um, but yeah, if we can see something on showing it in that area, that, that would be uh, that would be helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no problem. Do you know that that corner down where it says the six feet and the twenty feet? You know where the black car is. Uh, mm -hmm. If yeah. you go down, Julia. Yeah, right yeah. down there. What is the what's the approximate distance from the like just even the corner to the the line of the AO zone. I mean, I don't know. I'm from the, from that corner, it looks like it's about five or six feet. Okay. Not much. All right. <clears throat> All right. I know you probably don't want to come back into City Hall, but I'd be happy to no, look at this with you again. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm more than willing to come back into City Hall. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, we can, well, let's, do this as Joe suggested and the commissioners I think are in agreement that it'd be great to see a sketch of where you want to put the shed on the property plan with the um with the FEMA zones delineated and okay. so we we can talk about that um unfortunately I'm not going to be in the office tomorrow or the next day but I will be there on Monday next week if you want to come in on Monday you can maybe do some thinking about it between now and then and sketch out some possibilities <clears throat> Yeah, I definitely will. Day. Yeah, thank you. And Julia, you've been so helpful. I really appreciate it. No problem. <laughs> yeah. All right, and thank you all for giving me this opportunity. I appreciate that as well. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I was, I was just taking a, a peek at that. That uh, That's like a, a like a little oasis of, of you know, natural environment in, in that neighborhood. Certainly wouldn't want to disrupt that, so. Lots of rabbit poop on that property. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Wait, you and you own the other lot also, Judith? I do. And I bought it really because I didn't want anyone else to buy it and build on it. I, I, I love my beach grass. I, you know, obviously <laughs> the lot's way bigger than the house. Yeah, but I'm glad okay. we... I'm glad you agree with me about the that lot. It's too beautiful to wreck. No, no, we we agree. Yep. All thank right. You. Well, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Good night. Good night. All right. Uh, so next item: uh, certificates of compliance, request for determinations. Um, First one is uh, City of Newburyport, 388 High Street, Lower Atkinson Common, request for determination. Okay, so this is a project, uh, an RDA submitted by the city for a little bit more work down at Lower Atkinson Common. Um, as you can see in this, well, this is just an aerial in the presentation and um, Kim Turner is here and she can present this. So why don't I just turn it over to Kim. Kim, you wanna um, unmute and you can just tell me to how to go through the presentation. Maybe not. Kim, are you there? Kim, are you here? <clears throat> I just moved her over to be a panelist. But maybe there she is. 
No, maybe not. Looks like she's off. Well, I'll just give, I will just give a little bit of a brief present, like overview of what this is. And then um, maybe Kim can explain more when she gets back on. There might've been a technical difficulty there. Um, but as you can see, Atkinson Common, this is the ball field that's furthest to the back, sort of toward the upper Atkinson. And this is the woods behind. This is like the, the properties on Moulton Street over here that head down towards Merrimack. And um, and there's a wetland that sort of runs alongside the western edge of Atkinson or of um, Pioneer Fields um, in between the properties on Moulton Street. And All right, Kim's, Kim is back. Oh, okay, great. Oh, Kim, okay. Hi, Kim, I'm, what happened? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. 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 I don't know. I was on my computer and it wouldn't, um, it wouldn't recognize my speaker. So I had to join from my phone. That's never happened to me before. Yeah. I don't okay. know. I promoted you to a panelist. Maybe I should just leave you over here. Yeah. If you don't mind, I can just yeah. do it from here. Um, yeah. Again, I'm on my phone. So um, I don't know how much you covered. I don't want to. I just gave them a brief overview of like the site conditions, meaning that sure. we're like where we are and then there's a wetland here in between Moulton Street and the fields. That's yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so we, um, the administration was approached by the Pioneer League uh, a few months back. They want to donate a batting cage to Lower Atkinson Common. So um, actually, Julie, if you want to go to the next slide there, right. um, there's, there's an existing batting cage where where um, actually go to, you can go to the next slide and I can just show them the image. Um, so this is the bottom um, left field, which is the Hawks Lepre field, um, which is where some of the older kids play baseball. Um, and Julia might've mentioned that there's an existing um, temporary batting cage there right now wedged between the two chain link fences between the property line fence and the Hawks field fence. Um, there is a, a wetland that's recognized on the my map on the GIS um, off property, but uh, approximating that the buffer zone does um, the 25 foot does um, sorry not the 25 foot the 100 foot buffer zone does um, skirt the lower Atkinson common property line. So we just sort of um, approximated that. Uh, the reason I'm requ requesting an RDA is because we're not changing the ground plane per se. Um, there, the existing temporary batting cage that's there right now has sort of this crushed stone um, surfacing beneath it, and that's not going to change. I mean, they might um, top dress with, you know, a cut um, crushed stone where the some of it has, has um, you know, deteriorated, but they're not changing the ground plane. Um, the batting cage is going to be slightly larger than what's there right now, but the total size is about 30 by 80 or 2,400 square feet. The only permanent structures will be six um, just over eight and a half inch diameter steel posts that will um, hang the nets from, and the nets will be removed in the winter time, which they are right now. Um, we don't believe there'll be any negative impact on water holding capacity or runoff here. Again, that's why we're requesting the RDA. Um, and actually, you, actually, Julie, if you want to go to the next slide, this is the existing conditions there. Now you can see on the left-hand photo, that's the temporary batting cage that exists today. So they're just much thinner poles that hang the nets and they do and they will continue to take the nets down during the winter so um and then on the picture on the right just shows sort of that crush I'm sorry it was this <laughs> there was still snow on the ground when I took this but it is just a, a fine crushed stone condition which is which is their intention to keep that um the way that it is and then if you want to go to the next slide um, this is just a picture of what the the batting cage system that they are um, they are requesting to donate to the city. So you can see the poles are just a larger diameter pole, so they'll be more sturdy. Um, they won't bend as easily, and then the nets just string between the poles, and those will be taken down during the winter. And then you can see the ground condition um, very similar to what's out there today, just that fine crushed stone. Um, so that's sort of the gist of the presentation, if anyone has any questions.
Do they ever have any issues with birds and animals getting caught in that netting? Do you know? I just not curious. that yeah, not that I've ever heard of. Okay. And I don't know, Julia. There might have somebody from Pioneer League might be on the call. I'm not sure if they made it or not. Okay, let me see. We've got Kate Blanchard, Sylvan Knight. And Benjamin Becker. Don't don't think so. Okay. Okay. Anyway, when would they be installed this spring? Well, they would have to get the donation approved through City Council, um, but I would imagine that they they probably would like to do the work as soon as possible. Their season starts um, pretty soon, I think, April May probably. I'll, yeah. I'll make a motion for a negative two determination, which I think is the right one. Yep. So. Second. All right. Uh, roll call. Seymour. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Dan Warshaw. Yes. And I vote yes. All right. Thank you, Kim. Thank you very much. All right, next item is uh, Ben Becker, 8K Street, request for determination. Okay, I think we do have Benjamin Becker here. So let me move him to a panelist and he can explain the project that we've got um, on 8K Street. This is an aerial. Benjamin, <coughs> um, you want to give a little overview of this? Uh, yes, uh, Ben Becker here. My company is BLB Design Build, um, representing Maureen Pollard at 8K Street. Um, basically, at the moment, we're currently converting her garage into a um, master suite for her husband, who um, had some medical issues and has been unable to walk since he's been um, confined to a wheelchair. So he's she's trying to get him back into the house, and that is the reason for doing the ramp on the right side of the the garage which is turning into the new master suite um so as you can see we have um i drew the setbacks on it but it's about 21 feet on the right side and 20 feet on the rear setback um i think after speaking with julia we talked about not putting any um lattice work or anything underneath it so that we can you know the sand and birds and whatnot can go underneath it freely um, but it will be a permanent structure. It's going to be, you know, composite materials, and uh, we're going to use helical piers for the the uh, footings. Yeah, and I can just add quickly to that some different um, site issues, which is that this, the site is partially within the AE zone and partially out of the flood zone entirely, and that the location of the ramp not only is it in within existing driveway. It's also out of the flood zone. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so that's that's pretty much the the gist of it. Okay. Anybody got any questions? No. So you're saying basically the ramp will be built right on top of what's already driveway or some sort of hard foundation? Correct. It's just a gravel driveway. So we're gonna put helical piers in and then build it on top of that. But it'll still be permeable, so. Hmm. No grading or anything else, just, uh, just right off the piers. Correct. Okay. It'll have to be elevated to meet the new um, floor height in the garage, which will be about, I think it's four and a half feet above grade. Okay. Anything else? Your motion? I'll make a motion for a negative two determination. 
A second. All right, roll call. Uh, Steve Moore? Yes. David Vine? Yes. Carol Wagon? Yes. Dan Warshaw? Yes. And I vote yes. All right, thank you, Ben. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Have a great night. All right. So, all right. And last but not least, uh, Kate Blanchard and Craig Carpenter, 8 Nancy Street, request for a certificate of compliance. So, hold on a sec. Let me get um, Blanchard over here. Kate, I'm going to promote you to a panelist. So, hold on. All right. Um, what you're seeing, this is just uh, the order of conditions from way back in 2008. And the project at 8 Nancy Street involved removing an existing 16 by 10 foot shed, constructing a 12 by 10 foot shed with a four by 10 foot deck connection and stairs. At the time, what they did is they, they initiated the work, they removed the existing shed and then they didn't move forward with anything else. And in fact, they a few years later, they asked for an extension permit because they weren't sure whether or not they were going to actually complete the project, but they wanted to extend it for two years. So the commission issued a two year extension, which then expired. They never did the work, they sold the house. The, um, the, the, the future owners are the ones now requesting the certificate of compliance because they're again selling the house and the buyers need um, the order conditions closed out. So um, Kate Blanchard is the previous, the most recent owner. Um, Kate, do you wanna just give a quick overview? Uh, sure, thank you. Um, I, I think you're looking at um, just some aerial and just some photography based on the most current um, uh, look at the house where you can see there's no shed. Um, and that one was from August, 2023. And then if you scroll down, there's two other time stamps that show that there's no shed. Um, there wasn't a shed uh, from when we originally purchased the home, which was back in 2021. Um, so if you scroll down just a little bit more, so no shed there. And then finally, we were able to pull some older, much older pictures um, from 2012 from back before they um, created like a four season room and there wasn't a shed even back then. So um, thank you very much for um, for putting us on your agenda for today. This is a um, a cleanup so that the new um, the new owners have uh, a clear and free um, title search on their hands. Okay. Any questions? Get a motion. Uh, motion to issue the certificate of compliance. And I think Julia, you wanted a note there to say that the work was never done. Right, that the um, order of conditions is invalid um, because it's expired and the work was never completed. Okay, okay. sounds Second. good. All right, uh, roll call, Steve Moore? Yes. David Vine? Yes. Carol Wagon? Yes. Dan Warshaw? Yes. And I vote yes. All right, thank you, Kate. Thank you. All right then, at 7.17, we have nothing else to, uh, to discuss. Well, can, can we talk about National Grid for a minute? Yeah. Because I I couldn't tell from your email, Julia, whether they think if they put that duckbill valve on there and do some regrading that they're done because there's still no vegetation there. Yeah, well. They... I couldn't tell either. That's a good point. My assumption was that they mean to regrade it and plant it. Um, but they didn't say that. I can't imagine how, even with that valve, if that's going to solve all the flooding. Because the day when I was out there, I sent you guys those pictures. It was, it was an incredible amount of water. I mean, I, maybe that wouldn't happen again ever, but. Well, well it will, because the water is coming from two different places. Well, three different. It's coming from the pipe, 
It's coming from the American Yacht Club, and it's coming from down by the Coast Guard station. So this is just, you know, there was a storm. I, I forget where we had the storm, so when it was, but there was six inches of water on the trail. Never mind yes. how full the pond was. Yeah. Yeah. So this is not it's not going to completely solve the problem. No, but at least give it come in to to our meeting. I mean, if they're yeah. putting together a plan to to revise this, shouldn't they just come in and explain it so that we can have yes. a discussion? Yeah. Yeah, and we can uh make sure they understand it's got to be planted too, but at least if they regrade it or they put some fill in there, at least that water's probably going to drain. Right. Um, and and allow plants to uh, survive better. Okay. Right, but it, it, it's still going to get flooded on occasion. Yeah. Other sources. Right, but at, le but at least it'll be um, graded such right. that it won't stay there. Right. But so, I would think they would want to solve the other issues because it causes flooding over by the substation, which they don't want. No. Are you going to say, David? I was just going to ask what. So, what's the sequence here? They put together a plan and they tie it to their existing order of conditions, and uh, and then we vote on the uh, the change or modification. So, yeah, it, essentially, uh, what she's what she was asking me in her email, one of her emails was mm -hmm. whether they said they were going to do this, make this change, and and put in a, a duckbill valve and regrade it, and she said. Do you want us? Do you want me to submit that as a formal amendment, or is this something? Because the other, other than this one little piece, they're ready to move forward with a certificate of compliance. Yeah. Or she said, yeah. "Is it close enough to the certificate of compliance that you can review it and approve it during the certificate of compliance process?" And I said, "What to be to make it cleaner rather than doing a whole amendment at this point? Why don't you give us before you do the work? Give us the plan." And um, you know, description of the proposed work, so we have a record of it before the certificate of compliance request, so we can see what you're doing, and make sure it's okay, and then if it all looks good, go ahead and just resubmit it again with an as built during certificate of compliance for approval. Then, um, that's sort of where we are in terms of the conversation. I haven't gotten anything from them yet. I haven't gotten a plan or anything, so that's why I kind of. I agree with you. I think we need more. I think we need more detail. Are they going to vegetate it? How are they going to vegetate it? And so let's get them to just come in and meet with us and explain it all. We'll go. From yeah. There. And let them know that we have an expectation that they're going to vegetate. Yeah. yeah. Not, not just fill, but whatever. Of course, they sh should know that considering how much we've harassed them over the years about no vegetation there. Right. But yeah. yeah. Right, I would think that'd be obvious. Yeah. So, Julia, I can send you some pictures that show the six inches of water on the trail there. If you think that might, yeah, help. Sure. I, yep. I, I just got to find just them. See if they can come in for our very next meeting because I think this has been going on too long. Yeah, it's spring. <laughs> yeah, but pictures are great. So, thank you, Steve. Okay. Well, you had you had the ones I sent, which is the same area, looking yeah. from the other direction. So. You could, you're welcome to use those if you want. I sent them a lot of pictures. Um, okay. Anything else? Yeah, I was just wondering, Julia, have you heard anything from Charlie? Yes, and I was mentioning this to Joe right when we got on. Um, Charlie has sent an email indicating that he is going to resign or has resigned, which I okay. forwarded to the mayor's office. He's moving, apparently. Um, he apologized for not being here um, very much and um, said that he can no longer serve on the commission. So that's our situation. Yeah. So I had let the mayor's office know and I requested that they put out an advertisement for um, another commissioner. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All righty then. So if you guys know anybody, as usual, bring them in. <laughs> okay. All right. We have a motion to adjourn. Um, if that is what you would like. Second. Sure. All right. Uh, roll call. Uh, Steve Moore. Yes. David Vine. Yes. 
Carol Wagon. Yes. Ann Warshaw. Yes. And I vote yes. All right, guys. All right. Thank you so much. We will. Good night. I know we haven't been meeting a lot recently, but we will have any, a meeting in two weeks, April 2nd, I think it is. So just oh. let me know for any reason you're not going to be there because we are short down a member and I just want to make sure we've got a quorum for that meeting. I will not be there. You will not. Okay. I will. I will be in St. John. So. Oh, gosh. Right. Oh. Sorry. Just got, well, I just got back call in there. from there. No, no. If you knew what kind of uh, reception and anything else there was there. I, I don't think it'll happen. Yeah. Um, no, I was there and we had good reception. Do you have AT&T? <laughs> um, no. Really? No. We still win the prize for zooming in from halfway across the world. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're you, you don't have to worry about that one, Steve. You, oh, I, I'm not yeah. worried. <laughs> wow. All right, I'll All right. see you next time. All, All right, right, guys. Good night. Right. Wait a minute. So Julie, does that mean we won't uh, be we won't be meeting? Oh. There won't be enough people? We will. We'll still have oh. enough people if we have the rest of you guys. Yeah, I'm good. Oh. Yeah, I should I should be there. If not, you, you gotta know. let me try to let me know that you know sooner rather than later. That's all. Okay. All righty. Okay. Uh, Thanks, everyone. Good night. Bye -bye.